live video. Do you want to tag Missy Picky? Yeah, you're tagged. I'm assuming I'm live, but I'm not really sure because. No, huh? Am I? Okay, so we're over here at Leeward Community College. Today's Thursday, April 25th. We have as our guest speaker, I think the flyer says, Kumu Olelo. What else does it say? Flyer person. Anyway, our guest is Kumu Hina Wong, who's looking like really serious, and our group is. I'm resuming. I'm, you're tagged. Mm -hmm. You need to get yeah. No. Okay, so we are here at Leeward Community College, Wai Moku. We have our awesome guest speaker tonight is Kumuhina Missy Piki. Yes? That's just my screen name. That's a screen name, and yeah, we're talking tonight about Kumuhina's view or understanding of Aloha, Pono, and Kuliana. Yes? Yes. And so, yeah, so I just like go for it. Mahalo. Um, let me see if I can get on to you. Aloha, my kako and Nahoa Kipa. Hey, Nahoa we already got seven people online and I just posted it. Okay. And then we're waiting for Hina to log herself in and do what needs doing. Aha. There you know. Okay. So it's a small crowd, but obviously enthusiastic. Make a lot of noise, folks. <laughs> See, what did I say? Small, enthusiastic crowd, and everybody who's not here is missing. Um, did you tag me? Uh, yes, I did. Aloha, Roselani. <laughs> We're going to be hooking up, Roselani. Hawaii Island. At at uh, Joseph Navahi's gravesite one day soon. All right. Would you like us to do something, Hina? Um, besides, everybody whip out their phone and be sharing. Yeah. Everybody whip out their phone, and then we'll all be live, live streaming you at the same time. While waiting okay. for our pearls of wisdom to fall out of your lips. So, uh, ano ay kaloha ka ko Paulo ay na ho makamaka na ho launa in ohana may kikupo na kamakua aki kamaiki kaloha aloha ho ike e ya uko ma Facebook ya ka ko mani ini mahalo ni ko ka ko na una ana mahalo ni ya uko ka ho ni ana mai Mahalo no ke mana wa ko kole aka ko e no nei ilo ko ke ia luni mai a kula ma ka pole ma ili aloha aloha ha so i have been asked to speak on aloha and hono and kuleana You just blocked the screen there. That's all right. That's all right. <clears throat> just transition it. Feel free to, if you want to move around and you want to catch different angle or something like that, feel free. Will it pick up good from the speakers down here? No. I have no idea. Maybe you can make the, the sound thing go louder. I don't know how any of this stuff works. I'm an idiot. But yeah. Okay. Can you hear? Okay. Um, can you hear Nina um, from where you're at? I will relate to you as personal as I can, my own understanding, my own experience, this understanding of Aloha, this understanding of Kuleana and, and Pono. And perhaps this is uh, well that um, it's being shared on live and that I'm sharing this live on my, on my uh, personal feed. 
Kumuhina has been on our journey for quite some time. And you of all of our out of all of the Aloha patriots that you know our community has seen people who give of our our time, our energy and our resources, be it personal or otherwise. And resources is is in many ways it's not limited to one way or another it's not limited to financial it's okay um come on. so you can have a clear shot that can be. <clears throat> i started off my journey many years ago kawaii remember my my dear friend my mentor my my kid of my one of my best friends um, she said to me on many occasions Kina let's go girl come on let's go where are we going we're gonna go chant where are we gonna go chant and inevitably we always found ourselves having to be in front of everybody often leading the community down the road, um, holding the manifest Kinolao manifestations of Kukane Lono Karaloa, and we were at the front offering our oni. And that was the beginning of not the not the exact beginning, but when it comes to Aloha Aina patriotism and and being mindful of Kuleana, that was a clear beginning <coughs> in terms of the community <coughs> advocacy and, and being active. I'm not necessarily always the one pulled to the table for a political strategy. I have been, but it's not something that I've always been called to do. I like to do it. Um, but one thing that I've always been asked to, to bring into the room or into the four-way was the the pule, our little pule, be it through, tr through traditional format or through uh, pule kalikiano, a Christian pule. I can do both, I do either or. Sometimes I do one or the other, sometimes I do both. But my understanding of kuleana <coughs> is that there are times where I will be tired but kuleana requires that you not be tired. Kuleana requires that you remember the we in our culture when we come from the understanding of being kanaka, the we, the cumulative, the, the kako part of it, that is first and foremost, you know? So, kuleana means, I want to go do something else, but this is happening on this day, so I'm going to show up. Kuleana means that when I'm walking down the road, and everybody that I'm responsible for is either following me, or looking up to me, or leaning on me to be some sort of leader, that, as I have seen on several occasions when we were walking through Waikiki, and people, they're, they're looking and they're listening and they're like, hey, hey that's, that's the mahu, yeah, that's the mahu. And I can read their lips. <laughs> I can read it. Because I know I've had enough years of dealing with that. And I can see it on their faces. And then they turn. Kuleana means that I pay no mind to that and that I have to uphold myself and I have to conduct myself in a way that's becoming of somebody with a hundred young people in tow. Nowadays kuleana means that in and between what I do, so today I started my day as a guest speaker at Anue Nue, Kekula Kayapunio Anue Nue in Palolo and then when I was and give mom lunch and then 
I didn't stay home too long after that. And then I continued on with my new, next two things and I had to make sure that my cousin, mahalo cousin, in case you're watching this, my cousin Kehal can warm up dinner for mom. But the responsibility is still on me to remember, remember it and be responsible for remembering that if I'm not going to be the one, then I have to figure out how it's going to get done. That's Kulena. Kulena, from way back when, when I was going around with my dear friend Kawaiki, meant that no matter what I was doing, I had still had to connect back with what I was responsible for. From as long as I can remember, I was someone responsible for looking after my grandmother, my popo. My, my Chinese grandmother. I lived in my father's house and it was just he and my grandmother and I. Um, so everything that I did, I could go out with my friends, but I had to be back. It was up to me to figure out. I didn't have to necessarily stay home the whole time. But what I had to be home for, I could have been out, out the other side of the island but I better, have, better make sure that I'm home for either making sure my grandmother ate or that I gave her a bath or something. And once that's done and everything's taken care of, then I can go again. So kuleana means that even when I might be doing something else, I might want to go somewhere else, I might not be able to go. Or I might have to curtail what I do. Kuleana means that I disregard the pitfalls and the trappings of Western mentality and foreign conceptualization of right, wrong, good, bad. And I stick to Kanaka. So when I think to myself, what kind of example am I going to be? If I worried about myself, my presentation, and what people thought of me from a foreigner lens, and when I say foreigner, I mean outside people who do not possess Kanaka understanding of the world. It doesn't necessarily mean that you have to be Kanaka. It just, it just means that you have to understand the way in the world of the Kanaka. So, to be someone who was born my family's son and then transitioned to become their daughter, being Pono meant that <coughs> I have to consider my conduct, I have to consider my actions. I also have to consider what is it that I am trying to communicate to people. What is it that I'm going to be all about? Because what I'm all about is reflective of what my parents made it all about and what my grandparents made it all about. So as someone who was raised um, primarily by my grandparents, to be pono didn't, doesn't mean being perfect. But to be pono means that I'm conscious and conscientious. I'm conscious means I'm aware. Conscious means I'm alert. And conscientious means that not only am I aware and alert, but I'm actually thinking about what it is that I'm being aware and alert about. And that is <coughs> what kind of reflection am I going to be? So as I, as I come into my life as Hinale Moana, I remember my mother always telling me when she would see other mahu walking someplace. <clears throat> and a lot of the mahu that we ended up seeing, they were really loud and obnoxious. <coughs> at, at just at the wrong time and the wrong place. That's not the only indicative mark of what is a mahu, but we just happened to see them when somebody was being loud and rude and obnoxious. And my mother, um, my mother had a problem with that. You know, and they weren't dressed too nicely. They were just dressed like they kind of rolled out of bed and, and that was it. 
And my mother would comment, and I knew that, you know, she, she knew that inevitably, if that was going to be the way of my world and my life, you know, her comment to me was going to sting a little bit because she goes, see, 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 see can, it's, if you're going to be like that, you know, I, I don't want to see you looking like that and conducting yourself like that. And she thought it was just trashy. <clears throat> so in many ways, I was constantly reminded of that understanding of pono. Pono, again, pono is contextual. Pono... What's pono for me is not necessarily pono for you. What's pono for my road is not necessarily pono for somebody else's road. And what I view as pono is not necessarily what everybody else feels as pono. But pono for kumuhina meant that it doesn't have to be perfect, but I have to aspire to do things that would bring respect, Dignity, honor, would reflect character, would reflect that I have a conscience, and would reflect that I have consideration for others, immediately speaking, my own family. Pono, Kuleana, and Aloha. The, the drive and the energy to do everything that I am either asked to do, requested to do. Um, for example, this is the end of the day. I've had a full day. But it's aloha that drives me. There's nine of us here, including me. Whether we had nine or 90 people, or 900 people, whoever came is whoever was meant to be here. Aloha. <laughs> so, in speaking about aloha and kuleana and pono, um, I certainly don't want to communicate to anybody what pono should mean for you. Pono is always based to me, my understanding, and based on the context of your life. Is it pono for kumuhina to go run away and run for two, three weeks, four weeks at a time? No, it's not pono. Maybe I might be able to get away with one week. I went away for one week in November. Um, and it was a, a well-needed rest and vacation. Is it pono for me to just forget about all responsibility and not care about anything and anybody? Not at this current point in my life. Although, in my younger days, I was known to just go, 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 when I could. When my grandmother was healthier before she passed. What else can I tell you about pono and kuleana and aloha? It comprises my life. So now, thanks to the Office of Hawaiian Affairs, and by the way, everyone who is out there in viewer world, um, my time is, is supported by the Office of Hawaiian Affairs. I am an employee at OHA, and so the resources that are a part of what OHA is able to provide helps to provide for my living. But what do I do in exchange for receiving you know, access to my living, I must turn around and give it out. So, my classes right now, I currently teach at Halava Prison <clears throat> and Oahu Community Correctional Center. When I engage the inmates to come, they're mostly Kanaka Hawaii. Sometimes I get the occasional Polynesian, Samoan, Tongan. I might get an occasional Popolo, <clears throat> Kanaka Haole. But by and large, my attendees are Hawaiian. And the guys that come to my class, by and large, they really want to know something about culture. So uh, my class is based on uh, cognitive skills learning. So thinking, knowing what we think, why we think, how we think, and how all that <clears throat> kind of thinking 
this will also either help or hinder us. And so, through the utilization of language, culture, history, mele, uh, we learn we learn how to approach situationals differently. We learn how to consider the context of our lives differently. We learn how to think about our road, think about our relationships, think about the things that we can actually or should actually have as a goal to aspire to. In that class, or in those classes, excuse me, um, <coughs> that's where we do it. <coughs> so, I'm at Halava Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and uh, Ochopusi on Tuesday, Thursday. That's what I do. Sometimes it gets heavy on me because, you know, I may not have an extensive teaching load in terms of classes per day, but you got to be at the top of your game when you work with that population. You must be higher energy. You must be that charismatic person. You must be able to hold the attention of the people because you got to hold their heart and their mind. And you have to be able to say that if they trusted, if they trust me with their heart and their mind, that I won't hurt it. So it's, it's like holding a bird in your hand. You must, it's like holding a live fish in your hand. You can't hold it out of water too long. And you can't hold it too tight. <clears throat> you know, but you only have it in your grip for a little bit. It reminds me of <coughs> the kukini race for the makaiki. Kids start out, have to go to the water and grab a fish and run the, the racetrack and come back. And the fish has to be alive and you have to put it back. Can't drop the fish and you can't squeeze the fish till it dies. But Kulen is like that. I have my mom's life in my hand. When I have to go lead the Lahui, if I'm called to do so, means that I have to be considerate of um, I have to be considerate of several different things. You know, interestingly enough, I want to talk about this, especially for those of you out there on social media that might be seeing this on my feed. Um, I see a lot of what goes on. I hear, I read people's comments and, you know, maybe the Kumuhina 10, 15 years ago would have done the same thing, but the Kumuhina then would be immediately yelling, screaming, ranting, raving, and shouting all the other kind of things that everybody else continues to say. And nowadays, if people notice on my social media, I'm not saying too much. Because life isn't just that simple. Life isn't always just so easy that I can be so critical about an issue and then put myself out there <clears throat> but I forgot other things come into play. For example, when it was uh, brought to light that I currently um, engage in discussions that have to do with Word Village. When I engage the, that developer effort, Word Village, people say, oh, Kumuhina sold out. People say, oh, how come you support those things? People don't know that the original team of leadership that I met and I met them through the kule, kulena of Malama Ili Kupuna. Um, it's also known that I have been participatory on the Oahu Island Borough Council. I'm still the chair. You know? And that's another issue because people say, oh, well, you're being bought out. Of course not. It's, it's understood that when one... When one has a conflict of interest, if one, um, for example, if, if, if I have an economic tie to somebody, that I have to recuse myself and that I have to make sure that I'm not voting on things and I'm not doing things that are going to engage to create an extra benefit for these people. 
Um, I'd like to think that my integrity continues to serve me. You know, some people don't see it that way. Some people saw me uh, in photos because I was at a blessing, uh, doing something, you know, asking for good things and 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 being a part of the the Hanaho Maikai, Hanaho Ola'a, the new buildings that go up. And I would be one of the first ones to say, well, I can't afford to live there either. But what I do know is that our current reality is based on who's in political control and who controls the economics. And for as long as our political status remains the same and as long as the current political uh, machinery is what engages this community, then we are subject to the things that that political body will deploy and, and what they will do. We may not agree with certain things, but we have seen, yeah, a yelling, a screaming, and all those things. It doesn't get me very far. <coughs> Sometimes I ask myself, like in development, right now in Kaka'ako, um, and I'm speaking very, very frankly, so hopefully you're all tuning in. Kaka'ako sees several developers. One of the developers, Ward Village. I'm affiliated with them. Another developer is the Kamehameha Schools. Now, when you think Kamehameha Schools, Kamehameha Schools, because it wears the Hawaiian name, Kamehameha. People assume that Kamehameha should be at the forefront of things cultural. You assume that the buildings, the places, and the spaces that are associated with Kamehameha should be reflective of Hawaiian names. You should see Hawaiian plants. You should have Hawaiian programs. You should have things that benefit the Hawaiian community. Am I right? I mean, that's just surface. There's more. But what's the difference between a Kamehameha and a non-Hawaiian developer interest? Should we not have the same expectation? Should we not? Are we not able to hold them to same same standard? The same thing that I would insist for Kamehameha is the same thing that I insist for Word Village. And people don't know. People assume that I'm a yes person. But if you really know Kumuhina, I'm not anybody's yes person. I'm not people's yes person. If you got a good angle on it, if you have a solid analysis, if your assessment and your perspective on things is <clears throat> actually spot on, and rather in alignment with how I see it, then maybe, yeah. But, um, no, I'm not people's yes person. I've been known to sit at, oh, I, I remember one time, um, I wore the hat of liaison to the U.S. Army garrison. I remember. You remember that? Were you in on the meeting? No. I walked into the meeting, it was held at OHA, and as soon as I got to the table and I identified, I, I self-identified and saying, right now I'm wearing this hat. And immediately, like, guard went up. And people said, well, I, I don't really think that you should be here. But little did people <coughs> know. And I'm, so let me recap that I'm speaking to Kuleana and Kono. I know exactly what my Kuleana is. My Kuleana has never, ever stopped being that Things Kanaka, things Hawaiian, Hawaiian Kanaka worldview, Kanaka perspective. What's what's a, a hopefully considered right for Kanaka? I never ever lost sight of the fact that I need to advocate for this. I need to ho'oi kaika for it. Little did people know that when I served for that one short year as liaison to the U.S. Army garrison, that. <coughs> The wahine that I worked for, another wahine, Hawaii. That's the reason why she hired me. That's the reason how she got that contract. And she's the one who caught fire for me. They gave her, they gave her gas for me because I went in there telling the U.S. Army garrison that if they felt that they should have the opportunity to speak to my people, that they had to be completely honest. 
It wasn't so much that the community was going to like what they say or not, but if you wanted an engage, that they had to be honest. Whatever comes from the community, they have to be prepared to accept. They didn't like the fact that I sat at the table reminding them that their government, the American government and the American military have a seriously problematic history with our people and our islands. And, and because of this history, they must be clearly aware, they must be absolutely cognizant about how that history has played out and what it translates for us now. So Makua, I remember distinctly the discussion of Makua. They didn't like it when I said, no, I'm not here to advocate for what you want. I'm here to help you communicate to my community and vice versa. That's what I'm here to do. I'm not here to be your yes person, but people don't know that. The people that walked into that preliminary <clears throat> meeting where I self-identified because they were talking about military issues, they assumed that because the military gave the contract to the company that I was working for, that company is Honua Consulting, who I'm talking about is Trisha Keholani Watson. She herself, some people like her, some people don't. Some people like me, some people don't. You're never going to get away from that in the Hawaiian community. So did you get fired? No, but they had, excuse me, but they handed her a lot of shit for what I went in there and told them. Huh? Yeah, they handed, they, they told her, you know, you need to put your, your um, representative in check. And she said, no, that's exactly why I hired her. That's what she said. That's why I hired her. I sat next to the garrison commander, and I, I did exactly what I was supposed to do. I said, this is what's going on here. This is so you understand what this interaction is all about. And then I explained. The reason why I explain is because if we were an independent country operating, for those who are pro-kingdom people, pro-aupunikuokoa people, if we were completely running on our independent governance right now, would we or would we not require ourselves to have liaisons with every country that is in friendly relations with us? We would, no matter what country it is. So I don't view any of my communications as something to be worried about. Should be happy that you have somebody like me because I know how to talk to people. Because I know how to remain strong in advocating and staying within this context. But I also have to know how that culture works. I have to know how that language works. And I also have to know how, how they think. I know how military <clears throat> thinks. We took the United States uh, Army Garrison Commander to Kukaniloko. And uh, oh, Tom Lenchenko. <clears throat> so I don't wait for the army garrison commander to ask me oh you know what do I expect absolutely not if I know how the military operates I greet them a good morning everybody we get into the car I immediately turn around and I say commander here is what we're going to do today this will happen you will need to do this this will happen you should respond with this this goes, this goes, and you do this. Because this is the cultural expectation. If you can manage to get through these things, then maybe you may have an audience with the kanaka on the other side. I don't guarantee people what each other will say to each other, but I do help you to open the door and, and help to have amicable, amicable communication. It's no different from what I do at Word Village. I'm fortunate that um, the program that I got running right now brings at least at this current nominal level, given that multi-million dollar, billion dollar high rises are going up, but there still has to be a place for Kanaka. And so <clears throat> free of charge to our Kanaka. What do our Kanaka like to do? Our Kanaka like to come, listen to music, relax, and enjoy. 
I'm, I haven't been successful in achieving everything I want to do with them. But they have the program where people come. I'm one of the MCs. What's so good about that? I make sure that I speak in our language and that I require the people to listen because you have to create opportunities for our people, Kanaka, Kama'aina, and Malihini, to hear our language spoken in an everyday uh, venue. Now, for some people, those might be meaningless. For some people, those might be pointless. But I'd rather avail myself to do something like that rather than let the opportunity go to somebody who doesn't know anything. And for some people, they say, well, it's still a sellout. Life isn't just only an extreme. It's not all black. It's not all white. There are many times where it's gray. I grew up under my grandmother, my Hawaiian grandmother, Mona Kanani Okalani Ki Aloha. Married to my grandfather, John Fataro Matias, who is descendant of Rose P. Mauna Pali from the Pali family of the Kawahinekoa clan, the island of Maui, Honokohau. My grandfather grew up in the Tower Patch. <coughs> my grandmother grew up as the right hand to her mother in Honolulu. Both had Hawaiian-speaking parents. My grandmother, however, had a great a disdain, to be kind about it, and a great <clears throat> distrust for anybody whom she considered a foreigner. So the more she thought that you were a haole, any kind of haole, doesn't matter what kind of foreigner you were. But unfortunately, the most, co the most obvious haole foreigner was the Caucasian haole foreigner. She could not stand the Caucasian people because she left Hawaii as a young woman starting a family, followed my grandfather in his time of service and career in the United States <coughs> Army and she was subject to all the things that people of color are subject to in that time and that was segregation and that was discrimination and prejudice and she was treated with the same kind of negativity that any other African-American was in America at that time. She hated them. I grew up with stories of my grandmother going to the commissary looking for other Hawaiians who, have may, been, who may have found their way to America. And she'd invite them to their house so that she would be surrounded by Kanaka. When my grandmother came home and my grandfather and her um, reestablished himself in a house in Mililani, Mililani was not necessarily a place for all the locals to immediately run to. They eventually did, many did, but there were also many Oehaole that lived as our neighbors. She couldn't stand them either and I grew up under that. And I grew up as somebody learning to be very very hateful. I understood the um, what what it means for the kanaka to use in the most um, pejorative of ways, effing haole. And effing haole, we get some really pretty nasty and foul kanaka too. You know, <clears throat> it's it's the way of human nature. We have people that aspire to do well by others and do right by others. And we have people who could care less about others. It's not only the poet Haole. The reason why people, why Kanaka have a disdain for Haole is because of our history and our interaction with the United States of America <clears throat> government. But when we really think about Kanaka who still speak Hawaiian till today, the, <coughs> like the Nihau community, whom for the last 30 years has been the major influence in my life in terms of language speaking between the Niihau community and the Tonga community those two Pacific Island influences and I treat Niihau somewhat different from the rest of other Hawaiian Islands because 
as a native Hawaiian speaking community, they do not think and they do not act and do not behave like outside Hawaiians. Their understanding of Hawaiian way of life is much different than what outsiders know to be. So, um, you know, Nihau Hawaiians don't look the same at foreigners. They're much more receptive and they're much more forgiving of foreigners and foreigner ways. And they're much more welcoming. They more reflect the way of our kupuna. It's only at the point in our history where the trust and the confidence between us and foreigners gets violated in the major islands. And that's also contributed to by, by the loss of, of language. To have our, our language banned from, <clears throat> from our, our midst so that we don't speak our language. It comes from so many things. And for those of you watching, for those of us in here, if we know our history, we know exactly what that history is. But our people being true to who we are, we're not necessarily people who have to harbor the anger, the, the hatred, and those kinds of things. And I've done my best to be more discerning about how I direct my energy, my attention. So with that regard, the word pono, it is not pono for me to just hate on somebody because they f they're not from here. Like I said earlier, there are awesome kanaka, and then there's some pretty shitty. It's a pretty selfish <clears throat> kanaka. I get some kanaka. They don't care nothing about others. You know? Just like there are poe haole. And haole, for the record, means any foreigner. Chinese, Japanese, Korean, Filipino, they're all considered haole in the definition of the word. Not just Caucasian. Caucasian is just part of the pot. Anybody who was non-Kanaka is considered a Haole. Anybody who had a non-mutually intelligible language could have potentially be considered a Haole. Malihini, on the other hand, means a, a visitor. Someone who is not necessarily acquainted with all the nuances of a space and place. So when we think of the word Malihini, Kanaka don't always think of ourselves as Malihini because we're from here. But when I go to places within the islands that I am not from, I wasn't born and raised there, I don't know all the people there, I don't know the back roads to the place, I don't know the ins and outs of that place, I am Malihini. Beautiful thing, our language. Those of our Kanaka who are watching and those of you in here, if you don't know our language, find a way to get to know it better. It'll open up a whole different world. So with that, um, that's just a smattering of how I feel about those three words, Pono, and Kuleana, and Aloha. And as far as helping foreigner-driven efforts, unless I, I am able to impact the law that governs something, I'm not going to be too inclined to be doing too much in terms of <clears throat> yelling and screaming. I might avail myself for Mount Kea. But that's a slightly different context. There's far more room to advocate for something that is pro-Kanaka in mindset. And not all Kanaka have the same view about the topic of Mauna Kea. But I'm confident to be able to stand on the side of the Aloha Aina Patriots to prevent further development upon the top of Mauna Kea. But that's probably one of the few that I might avail myself to. I am not too down to do too much yelling and screaming nowadays because I don't need to do that. I can pick up the phone and have a conversation. I can go straight to somebody's office and I can have a conversation. But part of the reason why Kumuhina can do that is because Kumuhina had built a little reputation of <clears throat> yelling and screaming and doing things. And because I learned to communicate differently, some people might think that I learned to communicate differently and that I became soft. 
Some people might think that learning to communicate differently means that I'm weak. Some people think that learning to communicate differently means that I sold out. Communicating differently only means that I employ and I, I utilize different strategies to achieve the same things that I want. <coughs> and I'm getting older. It, it takes more of a toll on me to yell, scream, and to do all the kinds of things that 20-something-year-olds can do. I'm not a 20-something-year-old. Next month, in May, I'll be 47. Three more years, I'll be 50. No, I don't want to do the 20-something-year-old thing. So, um, yeah, when it comes to protesting and when it comes to being angry and when it comes to doing certain things, if the current state of affairs, I don't, I don't necessarily agree with the current political status and the current political structure that we're under, but it's the current political machine that's, that's running the ship and calling the shots. So when the other components in our Hawaiian community have found a way to completely mobilize and empower an independent running government of which my mother uh, was a great part of what we now know as lawful Hawaiian government, formerly known as reinstated lawful Hawaiian government, affiliated with Henry Noah. That's, that's my connection to the independence movement that I've been most associated with. I may not have been one of the, the forebearer, you know, forerunners of the flag for LHG, but my life went invest, invested into my mother, invested into her work, and her time spent with LHG. And so that's, that's how I understand about Hawaiian political independence. I understand that conversation through the lens of reinstatement of a government. Until such time that our independent government is completely reinstated and completely op functional and operable, I know who's calling the shots. And I know that I can't just be black and white. If all of us were politicians in the room and we respect, we we represented our different um, our different constituency. You from where you are, from where you are, where you are. We all have different people who voted for us and put us into political office. When I have an initiative, I say this is what I want, and I got this side of the, the room that I know I got your support, but this side of the room I may not have your support, right? In order for me to try to get your support, what might I have to do? I might, be have, I might have to be willing to support you in the initiatives that you want to. <clears throat> and sometimes it works, and it's not to the, the denigration of things that are appropriate for Kanaka. And then sometimes they're questionable. But look at our plight. We're not a majority of the people. Our people are far and few in political control. So, under the current political status, what will you do? What would anyone do if they were in political authority? Would it be so easy to say, well, no, I would just say, I would them all. And I'm going to stick to this, and, and then you'll find out how much the other kitties in the political sandbox will not associate with you, they will not support you for anything, and mm. you'll get nothing. And as shitty as and shameful as that might be sometimes, that's a sad reality. So yeah, I choose not to, um, I choose not to be too confrontational, too oppositional, even when I don't agree with people's politics. I prefer to simply say I disagree with you. And I'd like you to consider another option. I'd like you to consider the potential for this, 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 this. And this is why. Sadly enough, not all of our Hawaiians can do that. Not all of our Hawaiians want to do that. Not all of our Hawaiians want to do it. And that's not necessarily a problem. The problem is, for those of us who are willing to do that, Darned if you do and you're darned if you don't. 
I remember being a young child being told that I have to get my education and that I have to do something for our community and that I had to do something, try to do right by Hawaii, try to do right by our kupuna, try to do right, well, like I said, damned if you do and damned if you don't. The more education you get, the more you learn, not only about being Kanaka, but the more you learn about all kinds of things in the world, the less easy it becomes for you to just be so absolute. Right now, in the age of social media, everything is absolute. We find ourselves faced with people who are just about absolutes. Absolutely this, absolutely that, absolutely not. Absolutely yes for these things. And life isn't always amiable to the absolutes. So with that, I think I've set the stage for you to ask me some questions. And uh, I'm curious to know... See, is anybody commenting on this? Mm -hmm. They are. Yeah. <clears throat> Good comments, bad comments. Oh, uh, they're they're all praising you. Really? Are there any questions? Though? Does no. anybody have any questions? I'll take questions. Um, in fact, if they can go live, just ask them to to go live. I have a question for you. Yes. Um, in in this context, is there uh, an oli that comes to mm -hmm. mind that would fit the concept of Pono Kuliana and Aloha that maybe you could share with us? We can learn. I'm going to share with you the latest mele that I composed. There you go. Hold on. <clears throat> One moment if it'll pull it up. Okay. Hold on, everybody. So everybody said only good things? Ah, oh, yeah. Sure. 47 with the wisdom of a 74. Love. And they said they love you. Who said that? That was um, Maria Orr. Yay. Malo, malo. And then Alana Wilson says, hey, no matter what, I love you, Hina. My former Alana. Ka Alana. Yeah, Kahaka Patolo says, Kumu Hina is my kai. Malo. Um, Mahalo, I understand you more, Kumu, and yeah, a bunch of good comments. That's a, that's a good thing to talk about. Office of Wine Affairs. I'm somebody who protested the Office, office of Wine Affairs. I remember. You remember? <laughs> I'm somebody who went to occupy the offices of Office of Wine Affairs. I'm somebody who reamed the trustees for their political decisions. And people would say, oh, so what? You sold out now? What? You work for them? You work for the state? Damn right, I'm going to go work for the Office of Wine Affairs. You know why? Because they control our assets. And how else am I going to gain control of the assets if I'm not one of the organizations receiving financial support from the Office of Wine Affairs? That means that somebody, number one, somebody else is going to use it, somebody else is going to get it. That's all of our money. So you know what? I will have myself employed as long as they'll have me. I will have myself employed. I will continue to do the things that I believe I can contribute to the community to make our people stronger. If I've succeeded in getting our people to think. I didn't say if I succeeded in getting you to agree with me. You shouldn't agree with me. Our community should be diverse. Our community should be based on critical thinkers, people who can analyze, people who can assess, people who can evaluate, people who can take into account the large and the narrow context of our lives and our situationals and actually say, here's my analysis. Here's how I see it. So yes, I work for the Office of Hawaiian Affairs. But people will say, oh, but they're liars. Oh, the fake state. Don't have to argue with me about the illegality of the state of Hawaii and how we got to be there. But whether I like it or not, the state of Hawaii is still calling the shots great. All right, set that aside. What will I do with my time? What will I do with my ability to access a paycheck from the Office of Hawaiian Affairs? That's the bottom line. I'll tell you what I'm doing to, to earn the trust <coughs> of being paid from the monies of our people. And that is, I give my time to every last Hawaiian that I can possibly say yes to. Every time you call me, 
and you ask him, Kubuena, can you come speak to my class about this? Cultural this. Can you, can you come do this? Can you teach a mele to our class? Now, what do I say? Yes. yes. Not unless my schedule is already conflicting. Today, Anu Enue School, Kumuina, can you come do this? Yes. I run myself to the point where I'm tired physically, emotionally. You know what drains me the most is working with our Kanaka in the Hale Pa'ahau. Those brothers inside there, they need the support, but I, I understand this. That is where my understanding of Kuleana supersedes being tired and that I am fueled and driven with aloha for our people. So people cannot say that I sold out by working for the Office of Hawaiian Affairs. Absolutely not. It means that I know I'm going to put our money to good use. It means that I know that in addition, I'm not eating up somebody else's money. I'm taking care of another Hawaiian too, my mother. That also helps me to provide for my mother. So, am I doing something for the Hawaiian community? Yes, I am. Do I have, a, do I have an issue working for Office of Hawaiian Affairs? Absolutely not. And you know what? The people that work in the office, they're wonderful people. <clears throat> they're wonderful people if you get to know them. Just like any other place where you get to work. I, the people that work in the office are not the people in political control. Do I agree with all the people in, the, in the, the seats of the trusteeship? Maybe, maybe not. But if I don't like what they say, and if I don't like what they do, what do I have to do? Put myself at that table and become a trustee. Right? Right. Now, I can walk in and I can say something to be oppositional to what they, they put out there, but... Since I'm an employee, I should find a different way to have that conversation rather than just go batter them in the public. And for those of you who are only used to, and I'm saying only accustomed to, hammer. I have a question that popped up. Okay, hold on one second. Okay. Those of you only accustomed to hammering, that has its moments of efficacy. And it's not always effective in every situation. What's your question? Uh, this is from Julian Penny in Utah. He's tuning in from way up there. He says, what do you think Kalekoa would say about that topic on OHA and you working there? What would my, my cousin's Kane say? Excellent. I'm not sure. I think he would agree with my analysis. It's the same reason why he works for the University of Hawaii on Maui. He works for a state organization. I work for a state organization. We are fueled by state-controlled, state-driven, state-level organizations that maybe we may not be in control of the politics, but darn it, we will access our venues to be able to impact the people. Yes. Um, so you're talking about um, encouraging people to have critical thought mm -hmm. um, and the importance of everybody having, like, I mean, there should be a diversity of, of views and opinions and that kind of sharing and dialogue politically. So I'm wondering, like, if, if you or others have a, um, a kind of a, an analysis or a vision or a kind of, I don't know, maybe a strategic plan of sorts of how um, participating in, like, you know, being an employee at, at UH or being an employee at OHA is, um, can be helpful to, like, bringing about the occupation um, if you see it that way or if you think those things are maybe not as directly linked. No. Or how, like, how, how do people, like, justify those things, working for the fake state, but then also trying to switch it, or, you know? Very easy. I supported my mother for years for lawful Hawaiian government. Did I give up believing in the process of reinstatement? Absolutely not. Do I understand that in the event that the, the reinstatement of an independent government, because that's what it's called, that's Queen Lili Okalani in her letter, she said, until such time that I am reinstated, 
through those words, she opened the door for the United States to reinstate her position, her government. Reinstating our independence requires certain things. But until the time that not only is the government reinstated, but <clears throat> fully functional, and can then become the, the, the mechanism to manage our resources, govern our lands, natural resources, govern our money. <coughs> What's the difference in what I would do in the community, whether my paycheck came from OHA or UH or an independent government? See, what we're really talking about is trust, I, I believe. Trust that the Lahui would trust me. That the Lahui should know what my heart is. And the Lahui should know what I think and what I feel. And that if I were told something that would absolutely compromise how I feel on an issue, would I be strong enough? Would I walk away from something that even meant my money? Yes. I can, it's easy. Is that the smartest thing for me to do? Depends. Depends on what's being asked of me. Minor things, I'm gonna pay too much attention to it. You're not gonna see me being the poster child for some OHA initiative if they wanted to revisit the no. idea of federal recognition. Because I was clear with my former boss that that's not what I'm gonna do goes against my political beliefs and he never asked me to do it and I have no problem with telling my boss I don't want to do that not every boss would let me do that but my boss understood why because he understands that there's diversity of thought in the Hawaiian community I'm talking about you Kuyo Lewis <laughs> yeah the reason why I appreciate Kuyo Lewis even though we might differ in our political perspective is because he knew where I stood. He didn't make me do things that I couldn't do. He didn't make me have to compromise how I feel. So, working for a state agency, again. Is there a private funder? In this 21st century, where everything revolves around Western capitalist economy, money, gotta pay bills, gotta do all this kind of stuff. Is there a private funder that would support me to do my work in the Hawaiian community? There's people that, that get money, but are they funding me? No. Am I working for a private institution? Am I working for someplace else that will allow me to do what I want to do? Right now, Lana, you call me, I can go. In fact, I'm heading there next month. Kawa, you call me, I can go. I can, I can go at the drop of a hat. And... I don't have to require the grassroots people out there to fly me over and raise money. Why? I'm gonna say, no, hold on. Oha will pay for me to fly to you. They're gonna put me up in a hotel, they're gonna pay for my car, I'm gonna get a per day, they're gonna feed me, and I will come to you and I'm gonna work for you and I'm gonna teach. So when Kumuhina went around teaching, Mama kakawa o kuwa ina o ke e hu kakahiaka o na o iwi o hawa inei no kuula hu ye ha avi pao ai ola mau. I went around teaching wherever I could. Was I accessing all money? Damn right. Anybody who have an issue with me working for the state? No problem. All right, go find, me, find a way to pay me. Would I do it for free? Damn right I would do it for free. We as Kanaka, we do planning things for free. Who hasn't done something for free? Oh, you can come help me. Yes, you can. But we got to figure out a way to put gas in our car, right? Got to figure out a way to eat since there's not enough taro patches to feed us. And since we don't live completely off of subsistence living in Kokula Uka, Kokula Kai, Helenokapoe Lavaia, they go catch fish, and Helenokapoe Mahi Aina, and they go and grow Kalo, and then we're sharing everything, and then it's life is just peachy keen and dandy. We don't live in that society anymore. Or at least not where I live. 
So unless somebody is willing to pay for my, my house over my head, willing to feed me, willing to feed my mother, willing to do all this kind of stuff, then you know, I'm going to have to figure out how I'm going to do it. And I don't think anybody in this room can disagree that the, the monies that OHA controls is the assets of our Kanaka. Why am I not entitled to access that, that asset and go work for our Kanaka? Right? Right. No. no do, do you feel like sharing how that whole employment thing with OHA came about? <clears throat> yeah. I asked. My friend Kuhio, I asked him. Hey, what? Can I make one position for me? Can I hire me? I work. I I, I want to keep doing the work that I'm doing for our people. When I worked for Halalo Kahi Public Charter School, I kept doing the same thing. People asked me, "Oh, can you come do this? Can you come do that?" My school was paying me to teach. My school wasn't paying me to go koku or the rest of the Hawaiian community go do this, do that, do this, do that. But my boss, Laura Albert, bless her heart, because she said yes to everything that I wanted to go do in the community even though it wasn't necessarily immediately in the scope of helping the Hawaiians schooled at Halalokai. But she saw that I could benefit the Lahui. So she kept my paycheck going. If people have a problem with where the paycheck went, well, I don't own a fancy house. Um, look, $10 ring from where is it, Ross? This, it's not gold, it's not silver, stainless steel. My top and my pants are from Walmart. $10 each. Not bad, yeah? Look, <coughs> Ross slipper. <laughs> hey. Kenda, I got another comment question. Hi. They want to know if your grandparents spoke the Ni'ihau dialect of our language. The Ni'ihau family that took me in as their own did. My own grandparents did not speak the Ni'ihau dialect. I do not claim to be native born on Ni'ihau, but in the sense of Hanai, every birthday, family gathering, wedding, funeral, celebration, marriage, I was invited to come. Even when it came to family problem, I was there. And so, being required to speak in that dialect and not speak university speak or learned Hawaiian speak, um, that required me to think how how it stink. There's no way that you'll get away with just trying to use words without the found fundamental understanding of how the culture thinks. Many people speak Hawaiian today, but they don't know how the culture thinks. They don't know how the culture sees things. For example, what's wrong with this? You guys been? You guys look at I'm eating, but I haven't asked anybody. I haven't offered. You haven't offered? <laughs> Kanako who think they speak Hawaiian. Think you guys know. You have food in front of you. Ay, ay, ay. Love it. Ay. You don't say, oh, you lie. No, I don't like. Rude already. Say, hey, take some. You tell the people take some. Because you know they're going to be hila hila because they might not want to take from what you get because they like to be modest. And, and that's a true test of the Kanaka. Here, here, take, 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 yeah, take more. Even if it meant that I'm going to get one chip by the time you guys about take. Do other people out there learning Hawaiian know that? No. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily their fault. Right? 
You won't know it unless you're taught it. It's part of the limitation of just learning insular in the, in the school level. If the teachers don't come from that culture. By right, I should be saying, hey, hey, hey. Here, my, 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 my. I, come here, I. Money. Love it, okay. That's what I should be doing. But for your information, we were sitting here with this food here for the longest. So. <laughs> um, someone asked, what are the dates that you're going to be traveling to La Nai? <clears throat> Date that I'll be traveling to La Nai. Is that Rosalani? Yes. <laughs> yes. Hello, Rosalani. <laughs> I'll be out in Waianae the morning of May 6th doing a melee workshop at Waianae High School. And then that evening, I fly out to Lanai. I'll be working on Lanai on the 7th, which is a Tuesday of May. And I come back that evening. Lanai is too far. Yeah. Lanai calls to me. But when I move, being born in Rachel and then going up there and live there is a whole different culture. Born and raised here, and then go live over there. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Like, all the stuff's close early. Mm -hmm. We gotta go Maui for all the other stuff. Mm -hmm. Big I, difference, but very peaceful. Good I, for retirement. I understand what that's like because I grew up hearing the stories of my grandparents. So I know the Hawaii that they know. And I learned more about the Hawaii that they knew when I traveled to South Pacific because the lifestyle and the ways and the culture, the customs of the people were the same. The only thing that was different was the Polynesian dialect. Mm -hmm. I learned how to, oh, oh, kawaii kapakini. You know, you have the pakini, you have the bucket, and you have to bathe with the bucket of water. You learn how to bathe yourself. You learn what to wash first and what, you, what to wash last. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> You don't go wash your kole with the, that water and then you wash everything else. You wash your kole last. <laughs> right? Yeah, exactly. But people don't think that when the water running. My first experience with really, really like rustic lifestyle, even though my great-grandfather's house on Maui in Napili had indoor plumbing. That indoor plumbing, you had to run the furnace outside. You had to go throw the firewood inside the furnace, which was far away, outside of the house. And go outside in the dark. Put the firewood in. Light the thing. Let them run a little while. Mm -hmm. And then the heat going to go all the way and heat the water. But when you stand inside that shower, you gotta watch out because that water is scalding hot. Ooh. You can cook yourself on the island of Maui. I think I was third grade. Go stay in the house with that kind of water. And then when you turn on the water, I, the water when it first, you gotta let it run a little while because it's running all the red dirt. Yeah. Lucky we even had running water in the house. But I know when my grandmother used to speak about bathing in with, with the Pakini, because when I traveled to Lalotonga, it was like that. And your, your house, the door this side, the opening here. The door this side, the opening there. So if you go like this, these people see you. If you go like that, these people see you. They can see like this, and it's blocked like this. So no matter which way, they see you. In Tonga, Tonga's been like a second home. When I could get down there, same thing. In the village. They with the Pakini. Not everybody's house get running water. Still make the emu. Still get the outhouse far away from the house. Mm -hmm. So, I understand. What other questions are they asking? Auntie Tammy Hart says, um, could, could you encourage those who are seeking their doctorate or other 
educational goals to remember those whom uh, they had interviewed in their respective fields. Hurt, hurt has been expressed by um, to her about people not being um, thankful of the path mm -hmm. that they took to get there by thanking other people that helped them. Well, you see, as part of being Kanaka. Can you, can you see us? Can you see her? <coughs> can you span the people? I just want to say, hi, Tammy. Hi, Tammy. This is Walter B. Hi, my friend. Hi, Tammy. I just love her. Everybody's loving you, Tammy. Loving you, girl. show me, I guess, until... <laughs> so, um, I'm not sure why I would have to say that. Because if these people are Kanaka, they understand. Well, that's what you're supposed to do, but then see, that's uh, very presumptuous of me to think that everybody who is Hawaiian understands Kanaka mindset and Kanaka ways. Mm -hmm. If you grew up in a Western environment it's not second nature and I'm not jaded by it because I don't want to have an expectation of, of people that were not programmed to be like that and some people for as much as they tout around learning the Hawaiian culture and all this kind of stuff certain fundamental basics they still don't have as a kanaka E pono e ho'omana'o, pono e mahalo kako i nā wa, wa kokua mai nō ke kaipo e iau. Pono wau e ho'ike a e ha'awi i ko uleo mahalo i nā manawa apau. Pono e mahalo ya tutuma, pono e mahalo ya mamama, pono e mahalo i nā ohana me nā hoaloha. Nā lākou wau i kokua, nā lākou wau i kako'o, nā lākou wau i paipai a, a ho'oholo mua. Ma kou wale hele, ka ue kau koe nei. Pehea la wau e poi na i alakou. How can I forget the people that helped me? Now in my case, there have been many, many people that have helped me along the way. If at some point that I don't mention everybody's name, it's not because I forgot. But it's because they've gotten so many people that have helped me. So it should be sufficient that when I say mahalo to all of you who contributed to me, you know who you are. Now people with a humble heart who can accept that level of mahalo understand that it wasn't about them and it wasn't about me, but it was about the collective and the cumulative. That hopefully with what people have shared with me, I turn around and I share it back to others. Mm -hmm. So that the people who taught me how to speak our, our mother tongue, I'm not keeping it selfishly for myself. I'm not in the borough council using Hawaiian language and speaking Hawaiian running a quote-unquote fake state council because I want to glorify myself. No, I want, to re I want to remind the people that come there that I come from a place of empowerment and that they will listen to the language of the ancestral burials that we're speaking of and that they will put themselves in that mindset and in that context and they will be mindful of that when they sit inside the borough council for as long as I'm the chair. And if they don't like it, well, not my issue. I put enough Hawaiian and enough English in there that anybody can understand. And if somebody felt that they couldn't understand, they can either ask me to, uh, to clarify or I can simply look at their faces, look for who has the confused look <laughs> and take the initiative and say, just in case you're confused, this is what I said. See, I come from the background of being an absolute. Before the mai unuhi, mai namu haole, do not translate, do not speak English. I think what has helped people to respect me and listen to me when I had something to say is because I gave e enough consideration that I did translate something for people like that. That I gave enough consideration that I know that you don't know. And I know you feel insecure. I know you feel afraid. I know you feel kind of put out and left out. But I don't want you to feel that way, so I'm going to include you for a moment. 
hold on, Kaliki, and then I'm going to speak. But as soon as I speak to you, I'm going to turn right around and go back to Olala Hawaii. That's aloha. <clears throat> and to me, that's a more pono way of doing it. I know pretty kill. Oh, my popo no you. Eating here, te malama ito on Koreana, but the Olaloma to him. Eating here, te holo pono. Na po Koreana Pauloa. A mato e tuta come iriwakoi. Na po emia Pauloa, mato tuta tuta ponoi. Na po emia Pauloa, mato e ho papa ai iloko tamato hala vai. My da my da mata a i ti te pau ana he to tu ani ta mata hala wai wa ma po bone ye u ta po me pau loa he ti no ye u te malama ma to olo mutu hini to po he le le mi no ti pa mai to mata hala wai to mo bole mi no he lo ka mata hala wai ma he no puri kia te ma po po ma po po te ai ma po po ai no puri kia na o no unu. Okay, got it. Next question. The person in Utah asked if you have any recommendations for people that are trying to learn Olala Hawaii, but they're on in, on the U.S. continent. Is there an online go-to site that you could recommend to them? I think so. I'm just not sure of them. It's not hard to find, though. If you can nav you navigate your way on the computer, you can go look for online lang Hawaiian language learning. I, the reason why I don't know is because I'm not learning Hawaiian language online. Mm. Yes. The earlier, uh, I think there was a question about an Ori that incorporated the three concepts that you're talking about. Oh, the one I asked earlier? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, she said she wrote one recently. Yeah, I know. Yeah, so I'm I did. wondering if you, but you haven't found it, it yet. Yeah. Um, While you're looking for it, how often do you write one of these wonderful olives and stuff like that? Shall we put in a, a request, Sparky? Can you write an olive for us from Makua? Yes. You can use one of mine and just add on a tagline. It becomes easy. That way you can teach it out. That would be awesome. Uh, Hold on. I don't know why this thing is giving me a bad time all of a sudden. You know, and I have to say something. Um, you know, it has to do with Hawaiians who live on the continent. Before, I used to think that all the Hawaiians who live in America supposed to get all the cocoa. But you know what? I don't feel the same way. What's that about? Well, I used to think that, oh, just because you were native Hawaiian, you're supposed to be feeding off the breast of Hawaii. Every other Polynesian that I know that went to go look for life in some place that had a stronger economic source of income that went overseas outside of their homeland Tonga, Samoa, you name it what did they do? they went to work and they sent money home because they knew that they were living in a different economic context all the people that live in America on the continent you're not paying what we pay you know what I mean? You, you, you know. see this is, this, this is, well, this might get me in trouble with the people out there, but I'm not really concerned in trying to make friends. I can, I can only substantiate how I feel with my particular sense of logic. Hawaii is my pico. Hawaii is my mainland. I've made Hawaii my mainland. Thick or thin, I'm going to, I'm going to do it here. My taxes get paid over here. I need to pay my taxes. But the things that I do revolve around here. And when I go, I'm I'm not necessarily trying to import outside culture to funnel into here. 
But when I go outside, it's hopefully so that I can continue supporting what I do here. Hawaiians, I think, are the only ones who still want to rely on the motherland. And the, you see what, what little resources that come um, to our people over here. And the, the Hawaiians that are left, with what few Hawaiians we get left, we, we lucky we manage here. Yeah. So, you know, and, and I think that the Hawaiians that live wherever they live, they have to be concerned about where they live. Their first kula is to be concerned with what impacts them in the place that they live. As someone who's half Chinese, the Chinese government is not trying to support me over here because I'm several generations into being here and living here. Yeah? Just because I'm Chinese doesn't earn me uh, a stipend from the Chinese government. You know, just because we're Kanaka doesn't necessarily mean that I think that we deserve to be given this stipend from Hawaii. Well, if you live here, yeah, maybe. If all of us Kanaka are being given a stipend and some kind of financial support, then yeah, we're living in the homeland because then the homeland, see what happens when everybody leaves. People want to be so Hawaiian when they live elsewhere, but they don't realize that our homeland needs you. You know? Our homeland needs you. Where did everybody run away to? And I understand because economically, who, who the heck can survive in Hawaii now? But damn it, I'm going down with this ship. If the ship can go down. If the ship can float, then I'm going to be part of making it float. Kuleana. Kuleana. That's Kuleana. And I, I don't, I'm not hating upon any Hawaiian who's out there. I understand but as Kanaka out there, if you can, you earn the kala, you send support back home. Be like the other Polynesians with a sense of duty and kuleana and support back home. Instead of looking for home to support you. You support home. That's why you went away. Because you went away under the guise that your life was supposed to be better. That you were supposed to have it easier. Good. If you were strong enough to do that, then you got to be strong enough to help bring back support. You know, if I was out there living in America and making money, whatever, I can guarantee be sure I'm going to build me some kind of, you know, something that I, I couldn't build over here with the money that I don't have. And I'm not going to rely on the money that really our Kanaka, our Kanaka who live here in houseless on the beach. Why is it that everybody else in our homeland, everybody else get consideration, but our Kanaka are still living? Now, if you want to live in that situation, great. But if you're living in that situation under duress and you have no other choice, then that's where the cocoa needs to go. Not helping all the other ones who will go run away and... You want a cocoa? Come back. Come home. That's a tough, tough subject. It is a tough subject, and I'm just gonna say, I feel, come home. When we need our kanaka, everybody is ready, willing, and able to be stand up and be counted outside of the homeland. But the ones who are right here. We're the ones that got to deal with the repercussions of whatever goes on. And no, I don't believe that everybody should have the immediate say. There's the front line that those of us who make <coughs> Hawaii the homeland and our pico, we have the first say. If we need kokua from, if we need manao from the people who live abroad, but, you know, if Chinese all over the world living wherever they live would have a say what happens in the homeland, I think that's a interesting discussion. Does that does that kind of make sense? Very much, very much. Right? How many people of us in here are Chinese? You're part Chinese. Well, part Chinese, right? Okay, would we say what goes on in China? No. Let those Chinese people over there in China handle what's going on over there. Kuleana. Let me change that up. My ohana on Kauai. Do I live on Kauai? No. Do I have mana'o what goes on in Kauai? Of course. But is my mana'o going to prevail as the mana'o of what should happen on Kauai? No. 
It's the ones who's right there on Kauai that their manao should prevail over how they handle it. I can put my two cents in, but that's, you know, that's for them to consider. And I do not know why this is not coming up. Mele oni pa'ama. Something strange is happening. It's supposed to come up. No. You know, I think it's doing it because it wants me to remember it. Let me try. Aloha e ku'u aina O Hawaii nani kamaha o Kahonua o la haumea Me kamoa na nui a kanaloa E ma Mahalo i kahoilina Oh my gosh. See, this is why it's doing this to me. Hold on. Works shop. Oh, huh. It's good. You've got about five minutes. Maybe we'll wrap it up. Five minutes? Yeah. Hold on. I think. Does anybody have any comments they want to make while we're waiting? No, no, no. <coughs> Any other questions coming up on the poem? Yeah, anybody else ask a question while you're waiting for me? No, they just <clears throat> telling you mahalo, mahalo, mahalo. I'm sorry, I don't mean to Ayo. offend anybody, but you know. It, it wasn't uh, an easy thing that I came to feel the way that I do. And Auntie Tammy wanted to know what your phone number is at OHA. <laughs> <laughs> you could probably private message her that, unless you want to blast it on this. Um, you can be her Facebook friend and message her. No, um, inbox me. <laughs> uh, inbox me. I'm tagged over here. Because I don't answer the phone at all. Mm. <laughs> Aloha e ku'u aina o Hawaii nani kamaha o kahonua o la haumea me kamoa na nui a kanaloa Ku 
かなかえのかえアロハおにぱあまうのけアロハあいな So that song says if you know what it means it means to Love, honor, cherish our land, our, our beautiful land, and all of her astonishing wonder. The living earth of Mother Haumea and the, with the ocean of Kanaloa. May the next generation step up and step out on behalf of this beloved land. So let us stand tall and unite and move forward together. It is time to rise, all of our beloved descendants, our nation, our island people of esteemed and honored Hawaii. Stand as Kanaka, remember your heritage. Stand for our beloved flag, symbol of our nation. Be steadfast and vigilant always for our cause in defending and loving our land. We are ever grateful for the legacy left to us, for our Hawaiian way of life. Ever enduring is the wisdom of our ancestors, the treasure trove for future generations. Blessed from the heavens upon high, driving us and forging us onward and upward. Fight on, hold fast, and never give up. For the glory and honor of our Queen Lili Ukalani and all that she stood for. So that was my composition composed on February 14th, 2019. Mahalo. And mahalo for being with mahalo. us. Uh, <coughs> could, um, could you give a closing shout out to everyone that tuned in? Mahalo niya uto a paolo e na ho aloha na ohana. Nahoa makamaka kato e launa nei te yahi nei mahalo nui ya oto kati papono ana mai e te yo hi video live wa ono kaho e kumu hina a mahalo nui ya oi kumu ne mahalo nui ya oi to le ho ki pa mai yau to le ho kono mai yau e hele mai ai ai launa puno i kato a paolo maloko o taolumi a mahalo nui no oto a paolo to oto ha vi ane i to oto manawa kaho ne ne ana mai Ah uh, no, o te manawa kato e e e no nei no te ya uh, kuka kama iri ono ho i malo nui auto a paolo ke olu olu ho mana o no kuka awa lahu e ha vi pau no ki aloha aina ha vi kaku e kuka ku aloha no ya aina kama kuhi ne noi o kaku a paolo mahalo nui a hui ho Aloha. 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 Alo